So first of all, the different automation modes. There's off. When your track is off, it will not play back any written automation on that track. When set to read, your track will read the automation written to the track, but it won't write anything on it. Touch basically means when I engage a fader or an encoder or a switch, it will only write while it's being touched. As soon as you release the fader or the encoder or the switch, it will match back in. So if I hit play, grab a fader and let go, it matches back into the previous automation. Latch mode means that when I start playing and I start writing, I let go of the fader, it will continue writing until I either stop playback or I write and I auto match. Now the auto match settings can be found in setup preferences. Right here I have it set to 450. Write mode, I don't use very often, but under write mode, every single parameter that you have on that track that is automation enabled, once you hit play, will start writing. So I don't use that very often. Trim mode is very handy. It basically gives you a second level of automation. So let's say I like what I had previously written here. I want to keep it, but I want to do a global, just slight boost of this moment here. I can hit play and I can raise this moment while keeping the automation I have previously written. By going out of trim mode, it automatically coalesces that automation into my volume automation, and that's because under preferences here, I have it set to coalesce trim automation on exiting trim mode. So you could set it to coalesce after every pass. If I set it to that, what will happen is this. Go into trim mode. I stop and it automatically coalesces that trim move into my automation. I don't prefer that. I like to automatically, I like to not automatically do it. I like to keep my trim automation and then when I go out of trim mode, then it'll coalesce. Touch latch mode is what I use the most. What touch latch means is all of my faders are in touch mode and all of the other parameters such as pan, sends, EQs, all of, my, all of my inserts, those are in latch mode. So my faders, all the volume is touch. Everything else is latch. So over here, you have your write enable buttons. These need to be selected in order for anything to be written on your track. Sometimes these won't be on and then I'll, try, I'll be trying to write plugin automation and nothing's writing. Oh, well that's because that's off. So these gotta be clicked on. I don't usually write mute automation, so I keep that off. And then this object bus is if you're using Atmos. Okay, so the next step, we gotta check to make sure our plugin has its parameters here. This means that they these parameters will be automated. If they're over here, they won't be automated. Gotta make sure they're over here. Okay, so like I was saying before, I prefer touch latch most of the time on my tracks, mainly because I like to have access to my faders and be able to move them and release them and, and know that they're matching back in as I'm working. But then I like to be able to, before I start an automation pass, if I wanna write some pan or some EQ to a small section or a whole scene, I can make those moves, pan something left, pan something right, open up a send, go, hit play, and then those parameters will write throughout the scene, and I can then grab my faders and make fader moves while all those other parameters are writing in latch mode. And then once I'm done with that scene, I can come over here, I can click auto match, 
or I could just stop and then um, everything will match back in. So first of all, one thing I wanted to show you is under preferences, this button here, allow latch prime and stop. I always have that checked. That allows me to do a couple of things. So let me show you first here. Let me open up a couple of tracks here and show you the automation lane. Let's say I wanna put some, this is my LFE send. I wanna put some LFE on this track here because it's got some good low end frequencies in it. And let's just say I wanna pan you right, I wanna pan you left, and then let's come over here and let's say I wanna put a low shelf on this sound here. Now with that latch prime and stop enabled, Pro Tools is allowing me to make those moves while I'm stopped, and once I hit play, those parameters will start writing. Now if I'm through this section and I'm done, I can just hit stop, and it automatically matches in. However, let me do this again. Let me put these guys back in. Latch mode, here we go. The better way to do it might be to auto match. Auto match matches everything back in in a smoother fashion. It's not a hard cut, which might cause um, snaps. You can see this track here did not um, match in based on the time because the bypass of the send is a switch. It's either on or off. So it doesn't smoothly match in. Now another way that I work often is in preview mode. Preview mode is very powerful, very handy. I use it all the time. Um, preview allows you to audition parameters. So for instance, I go into preview mode and let's say I just wanna loop this crash here. What I can do is test out settings without writing anything. So you can see as soon as I move this low shelf, this turned green, meaning I mean that there's a parameter on this track that is being previewed. So what's great about preview mode is any other automation I have playing at this moment is going to play back, except for whatever parameter I touch. So since I touch this, this is now suspended, allowing me to hear what this is going to sound like against everything else playing at this moment in time. So let's say, okay, I like, I like this right here. Okay, cool. That sounds good. And again, I'm going to say, okay, I like this panned over here. This sounds great panned over here. And then my LFE send, that sounds awesome. Okay, perfect. So now there's a couple of things I can do to commit what I am previewing. I can punch preview. So I'll back up to the beginning of this moment. I can hit punch preview and then hit play, and it starts writing the moments, the parameters that I have previewed. Match back in. There's another way that I work as well. I'm gonna go back into preview, move these parameters just like I had before. If I'm happy with these, parameters that I've just previewed, what I can do is make a selection. It doesn't matter if the selection is on this track or if it's on this track, it doesn't matter because all that matters is what I have previewed. And then I can simply come over here, write to all, and it writes those parameters in that selection. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is making sure that you do have a selection because if you don't, here's what will happen. Undo that. If you don't have a selection, it will write to the entire session. And that's happened to me before. And then you don't realize that you've done that until you've mixed a little bit later. And then you realize that you just blew out a bunch of automation. So that's something to be careful of. You can also, with latch prime and stop on, that preference that I showed you earlier, 
you can make your moves. Sorry, you got to make a selection first. Make some moves and then you can write that quickly. Now that only works when your tracks are set to latch. In this case, I'm in touch latch and the parameters that I'm adjusting are latch. That wouldn't work up here because this is a fader, this is volume automation. So if I move my fader down and try to write, it will say no automation written because it is in touch latch. If I just sw simply switch this to latch, move my fader down, write to all, then it will do it. So another thing I forgot to mention are these buttons here. Let's say I wanna write this pan here. Now, since I'm in touch latch, the automation will continue. And then if I hit this right here, write to all, it will write it to the whole length of the session. Undo that. This is write to end. That'll write to the end of the session. And then this one will write to the beginning of the session. This writes to a next break point. So there has to be a break point here, which I just made one. So now if I start writing and I hit this, it will write it to that break point that I just made. And this writes to the punch point. Sorry, let me try that again. It will write to the moment where I punched in. 